was really nothing I wouldn't work on. And, uh, that's kind of what got me in, interested in trucks, because I've worked on a few truckers' CBs in my lifetime. Anyway, this particular time, my landlord came over, which not unusual. Sometimes she liked to hang out there. She was okay, you know, not too bad. Not someone, you know, you'd want to go to the bar or anything with, but I don't think she'd do that anyway. No, she was good people, all in all. She had her quirks, but don't we all? Anyway, she came over one night quite beside herself and I was like calm down what's wrong cause when she gets flustered she can't talk cause her husband done beat her so bad that her mouth and her jaw was all messed up so you really had to listen to what she had to say and once she finally explained it she told me her car stereo ate her tape And I was like, calm down, I'll go look at it, you know, and she even offered to take half of my rent off for the next month for fixing it. And I was like, let's just see what we gotta do. So I went to her car, she had this Camaro, it was a really nice Camaro, on the outside. The inside, however, was like, eh, you know. <laughs> But I've been in worse, so I got in, took the stereo out, unlocked it all, you know. Took it in the house. No, oh, that's not where I want that. That's where I want that. And I started taking it apart, you know, and she's like, looking at me like, you know, as if to say, you're going to be able to put that together. Class pulling stuff out of it, you know, because you got to get to the tape. And there's a lot of stuff in the way in the GM stereo. It was just a stock stereo. And, uh, I pulled it apart, got the tape out, got it all fixed up. I have to walk ahead tools that, you know, can manually rewind things or make motors move that don't want to move. Comes in handy. Easily made. But anyway, I put, got it all cleaned up. I made sure that all the innards were all nice and spick and span like new. So I don't eat it again. And I put it all back together. I plugged it all in on my bench. Because anything a GM, Ford, or a Dodge has in the dash in the way of audio. I had on my bench, so whatever they had, you know, in their cars or whatever, I could just plug in, made it easier to flip a couple of switches, you're good to go, so I flipped the switches, put her tape back in, and she was just grinning, and, um, so I took it out, cleaned it all up, because it was a mess, I physically washed it up. Took it back, put it in her car, got it turned the key on, made sure it worked. She was quite beside herself with happiness at that point. And that was good to see. I never did get paid for that. Didn't need to. Just seeing her happy again, you know. And I, the tape that she was listening to was the Holy Bible. So yeah, I wanted to definitely save that for her. And I managed to save the tape. There was no breaks or anything in it. No major kinks, you know. So she was happy and I was happy for her. Another 
time when I was living in my rise, it was a low income high rise. Where it got around that, you know, I've I was a technician half my life. So anytime somebody needed something fixed, they'd come to me. Well, come on, these people wouldn't live there if they could afford better, right? So half the time, I didn't charge them. You know, if I, I knew they ain't got no money. You know, they're in the same boat I am. So they would say, well, what do I owe you? And I'd be like, yeah, I ain't worried about it. A lot of times I would open my door to go out to get the mail in the morning. And I'd have a bag on my door with a thank you note, bag full of paydays or a couple of Pepsis, sometimes like banana bread or other baked goods. I've been paid with all kinds of, all kinds of stuff. I remember this one lady who lived there, Sydney. She was a pretty cool girl. Kind of reminded me of my mom. In a way. But she always had wheelchair problems. Because she had an electric wheelchair too, you know. And I'd go up there and, and fix her up. I can't see her being stranded, you know, and her medicating. She told me that don't pay for nothing. They wouldn't even buy her a new one knowing full well she needed one. Because that one was just falling apart. I don't know how many times I've rewired it. But anyway, first time I went up there, I come in and Cindy and I were talking, and pretty soon she's got this bird right about this big. And she comes flying, lands right on my head. And I'm like, and she's like, you don't mind birds, do you? And I'm like, as long as they don't bite. <laughs> or poop in my hair. She's laughed. But every time I would work on her chair, that bird would come fly. I learned to wear a ball cap after the first time. <laughs> that way if, you know, if she did, body on my head, I could just wash the ball cap. But that was, you know, I like to help people out like that if I can. I just wish more people had that kind of kindness. Somebody wanted to know what my mom and dad did. Well, my mom, she was quite the woman. However, she had the same disease I do. So she was disabled. In fact, the wheelchair I have, I inherited from her. She was, she was a tough woman, I'll tell you what, yeah, you didn't want to, as kids, we, you didn't disobey mama. <laughs> if mama says do it, you do it. If mama says don't do it, you don't do it. Because she'll, she didn't forget, you know, yeah, me and my brother, we could run upstairs because I could crawl upstairs, my mom couldn't. And my dad worked. So we would run upstairs, right, thinking, you know, we could just hide out up here half the day. Mom will forget. No punishment. Wrong. <laughs> no. She'll make you think you're all nice and comfortable, and yep, she forgot. Brother and I, you know, yeah, we're good. Nope, she snatches us up as soon as we're next to her. You remember earlier, and wop wop, she'd 
with butter plates or whatever was necessary. Usually it was for a butt whooping. No, don't get me wrong. She didn't beat us. We weren't regularly whooped. <laughs> no. My dad even had this thing. You could talk him out of the belt. Until it came completely off. If it escapes that last loop, he's going to use it at least once on your backside. <laughs> but that was rare. You had to really push him to that one. <laughs> My dad, we have a plant here, well, had, called Prestolite. They used to make ship starters. Well, that's where my dad worked. He was a janitor. And he did that up until his first heart attack, which disabled him. And he was collecting pension from there on. In fact, he is the reason I get my money. Because he set that up from me years and years ago before he died. He was 47 years old when he died of a heart attack. Believe me, he died happy. Him and my mom were, um, he and then she and then and it happened. So yeah, he, that's just how he always said he was gonna go. And yes, my dad was very much a Christian. Rarely did he swear. He only cussed when he was really, really, really upset. And when those words come out, you knew it's not going to end well. <laughs> but like I said that, that was rare. My dad was good people. So was my mom. Everybody in the neighborhood hung out at our, all the teenagers, all the kids, because mom was like mom and dad was like dad to everybody, you know. So growing up, we had a lot of, you could say adopted siblings, some of them not so nice, but hey, uh, it was all right. something else. Let me look. I got a note here. Oh, my grandparents. I don't know a whole lot about my dad's side. My grandma on that side died when I was really, really young. I remember bits and pieces of her funeral. I remember I didn't like her too much. She was, um, yeah. <laughs> my grandpa on my dad's side, though, Grandpa Joe. Yeah, he was all right, you know. He had his quirks, but he was all right. Never really hung out with him or anything. Now, Grandma and Grandpa on my mom's side, however, we used to live with them when my brother and I were really young. Their house was, like, split into two. So you had the back part and the front part. Well, the front part was Grandma and Grandpa's, and the back part was Mom and Dad's. Well, and us kids. And that was pretty much... My roots was more into that side of the family. Grandpa was an all-around kind of a guy. And he was a preacher. He preached at his church all the time. Always talked to us about the Bible. I mean, not to the point of drilling it, you know, but... Just casual references, you know what I mean? All my life. <laughs> One time, I remember this very well. We had this well in the backyard. It was like this big, kind of looked 
pretty much you could go down about, I don't know, four feet. There was a rope, and it was dry. But then, in the corner, there was a pipe that went down. That's where the water went. Why is the height in there? When it came time to put my leg braces on, because I hated them things, they hurt. Pain in the butt. And I used to hide all the time. I've hidden in the strangest of places. <laughs> and Grandpa, one time, came out and found me there. Pulled me out. Made me put my braces on. <laughs> he was a pretty cool guy. As an adult, I was living there with my mom and grandma and grandpa and just kind of helping out with grandpa because he had Alzheimer's. He had dementia. I mean, it was bad. There was times he didn't even know who anyone was much less his own wife. However, he never forgot that Bible. He never forgot who Jesus was. And that's, um, I think that is just, I think that's something. He won't let you forget. I think that's awesome. But I've seen my grandpa at his worst. We had this utility room that kind of separated Grandma and Grandpa's area from our area. All that was in there was a little pantry and the uh, hot water tank, washer dryer, and, and a great big chest freezer. Been there my whole life. Why? Well, come out one time, one night, to go to the bathroom, and, um, I seen Grandpa, he was in the utility room, buck naked, picking weeds, he thought he was outside, fully dressed, picking weeds, it was bad, one time, See, Grandpa used to work at GM. That's where he retired from. And my grandma come back. I owned a Buick Regal. It was a 1979 Buick Regal. Mint condition, mind you. And this was in the 90s. The air conditioning even worked. My mom and I love that car until I crashed it. Well, anyway, that's another story. That's what kind of where I got that scar. But that's another story. My grandma came back one day to my room. Mine was all the way in the back. And she was, crap was breaking into your car. Crap was breaking into your car. And I'm like, oh. Because, yeah, he probably knows how to do it. And sure enough, he had the door open by the time I got out there. And he was taking apart my column. Because he was going to hotwire it because he was late for work. And he lost his keys. That's what he was on about. And it took me about half an hour to convince him that that was my car. I have the keys. I will gladly take you to work. So, yeah, that's what I did. I took him to town. <laughs> Got him convinced that I'm picking him up from work. And we started heading back to the house. I've done that I don't know how many times. Finally, I ended up, I had to install a car alarm. Because he wouldn't leave it alone. I'm in one of the very last pictures that was ever taken of my grandpa. My grandma thought it'd be funny. I don't know, her sense of humor was just something, but I was holding grandpa in the tub. He had gotten himself in the tub 
and couldn't get out. And none of us could lift him out. He was a big guy. And I was just kind of keeping him from turning on the hot water and scalding himself. Because that hot was hot. And we were just waiting on help to come. You know, it was coming, but we were out in the middle of nowhere. You know, so it's not right away. And Grandma snaps and pictures of that. And not long after that, he passed away. Not long after that, Aunt Jan passed away. That was my mom's sister. Not long after that, my grandma passed away. Not long after that, my mom passed away. That was pretty much just about everybody I cared about right there. I remember my first cellular telephone, 50 cents a minute. No matter what, you push send, it's 50 cents a minute. Nobody had the number except my mom. And all of a sudden, the phone rings. I was at a friend's house here in town, and I still lived out in Harvard. And my phone rang, and I answered it, it was my Aunt Jan. And she's like, where are you? I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, how'd you even get this number? Well, I figured she got it from my mom. So I told her where I was. I wasn't very far away from her house. And she asked me, can you pick up Grandma and take her home? And I'm like... She's at your house? Yeah, and we're late for a church event. Or whatever was going on, something they had planned for quite a while and they were gonna be late. So I, I backed up and that, I think that was the first time Grandma ever rode with me, with me driving. She was very picky, she only rode with Aunt Jan. Or Aunt Betty. But she rode with me. And of course I didn't have enough gas to come back, so that kind of, I had to stay there. <laughs> but that's all right. Grandma needed a ride. I'd drive that woman to Texas if that's what she needed. Same way with my mom. I always drove her to Ann Arbor and back whenever she wanted to go. It was either me or Jody. Jody was kind of like a sister to me. We don't keep in touch much anymore. But she was around a lot back then. And her and my mom would take the car and just go do girl things, you know, whatever. Didn't bother me if I was in for the night. Mom be like, you don't need the car tonight, do ya? And I'm like, no. Good, cause Jody and I's gonna take it. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. I had her on my insurance. Cause I knew, you know, that way if she ever got into a wreck, she's insured too. I knew she'd be driving it. <laughs> Why not? I drove her so many times. <laughs> she had a Camaro. It was a 74 Camaro, I think it was. Well, anyway, my car key fit her Camaro nicely. So, whenever she'd come over, they'd take basically my car, because Mom was more comfortable in it. And it was more wheelchair friendly. And if I had to go into town or something, I would just steal Jody's car. Cause I made up some portable hand controls. Just snaps in. 
off I go. That car was fun to drive. <laughs> yeah, I bet you watched the gas again. <laughs>
Anyway, I think I'm going to leave you with that. This video is not going to be edited or anything. I'm just going to stop it and upload it. So, if it's a bit long, I apologize. But I thought I'd share some of my history, my memories. I'll probably share more.